Today, Derek and Mike, Americans in Denmark, will be playing What's That Mean? Mike, you're up first. I think this was the first meme that I ever learned about Denmark. It gets passed around, I think, every WhatsApp group for every Danish language class because this is our life, learning the Danish language. You look at it, basically you see on here three different places, says ignore this letter, that's how you learn Danish. The teacher says, you don't say this, 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 or this. And that's how Sefuli, uh, I don't know, 45 letter word, ends up being said like Sefuli. This is very true. <laughs> Speaking of Sefuli, yeah, just little hint for all of us foreigners that are here in Denmark. Most of us just try to blend in by just dropping a sofuli. Ooh, uh, talk for a day every now and again. This is what it feels like. We're just sprinkling in whatever Danish we can say to get through this little conversation and not have the nice neighbor upstairs really realize that we can't speak Danish at all. Very true. <laughs> I love a good history meme, and I would love to know what crazy medieval painting or whatever this one happened to come from, but definitely applies well to Danish here. I mean, the normal joke is that Danish sounds like German with potato in your mouth, but doesn't it sound so much more romantic if we just said it sounds like Swedish, but with frogs coming out of your mouth? This is a winner. <laughs> Who doesn't love bad luck, Brian? I mean, Every situation he gets into is a bit of a fail, and this is perfect. I mean, Bay in American slang, it's a little nickname for Beyonce, it means before anybody else. It's, it's a term of endearment, it's especially what you call the, the person that you love. And then you come to Denmark and realize that Bay is slang for poop. So, just a little hint for all of you here, Denmark is the one place where calling your girlfriend or boyfriend scat, that means love. Bay, poop. Derek, now you. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. I guess it does sound like choking. And actually, I feel like I'm choking every time I, I speak Danish because I'm not very good at it. I kind of choke like Russia in the Euros. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty easy to make that kind of joke. I don't know. I think we all know Danish is a bit hard, though. So not really a hot take, but definitely true. Sounds a bit like choking, especially when I speak Danish. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a car guy, but this one definitely speaks to me uh, because it's it's literally what I go through when I try to say something in Danish. I practice it in my head. I think I'm ready to go. It sounds good up here, but then out here, it's just a big old mess. So yeah, pretty accurate. <laughs> okay, well timed too, because this is basically what happens next. So again, I get something in my head. I'm all ready to go and say, uh, you have a get hand coffee. And uh, then they come right back to me and say, uh, yeah, that'll be 51 krona, thank you. They don't even give me a chance to, to, to play along with my bad Danish, but you know, that's okay. I know how hard it is to hear somebody speaking Danish the way that I do. Um, but yeah, it can be, be pretty tough going between Danish and not even getting the chance, not even dignifying my attempt at Danish with a response, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, Danish animal names are actually really funny in and of themselves, but the fact that these two animals have the exact same name, it just tells you that Danish is a very interesting language. Um, I, I think that the name uh, Masvin, it, probably not saying it right, but I think it actually comes from the same thing. So Svin is the ending and that means pig. So of course, guinea pig, but why would you call a porpoise or a dolphin pig? Well, mer or the beginning part, M-A-R, I think it comes from German or Latin, meaning sea. And of course that makes sense for the porpoise or the dolphin. The guinea pig though, uh, think about it. They came over on boats, so they were also called sea pig. I don't know, we'll just go with it. But hey, that's Danish. Mike again. <laughs> There's always a little bit of a rivalry between the various royals, but this meme summarizes it just perfectly. I mean. At the Olympics in London 2012, there was Queen Elizabeth stoically sitting up there seeing all of her former colonies walk by. Meanwhile, Donny Magreda, who basically is a Danish every person, was down in the bowels of the handball arena screaming at the refs, cheering on the Danes. This, this is Danish royalty in a nutshell. <laughs> and this is always my favorite that shows up in April when it's Donny Magreda's birthday because this is why everybody loves her. I mean, she's Daisy. Look at her. She's just like any other 70, 80 year old woman in Denmark. She wants her pulsa, she wants her cigarette, she wants her apple juice, and she's happy as a clam with her Daisy earrings on just to make sure you know who she is. 
This is why we love her. I love her. This is definitely me every day after the Eulafrucus when you have a little sleep in and then suddenly you're on the couch and you realize the sun's already going down again. Yeah, this is definitely what December and January are like here where if you blink, suddenly you completely miss the three hours of gray depressing sunlight that we actually had. But realize the sun gets its revenge in June and July when it wakes you up at three o'clock in the morning and says, wake up. Ugh. Oh, but this is a little bit harsh. I mean, there is the running joke that summer is the greatest weekend of the year in Denmark, but I mean, come on, when you have an entire winter that is seven months of gray and you finally get that nice weather, that's what makes summer here so nice. And we would ask our friends, you know, why do you go away for three weeks in the Mediterranean? And they say, well, you never know when the nice weather is going to come and you need some sun. So this explains this. I mean, Summer can be brutal. Our first summer in Denmark, I don't think the sun shined more than, what, two or three days? So yeah, we lived this one too. Now over to Derek. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. In the summer, all we want is a nice sexy tan, but um, just like Casper Smeichel blocking everything, it's also blocked and you don't really get that now, do you? Yeah, that's, that's it. That's the meme. Okay, yeah, that's basically the history of, of Denmark and Sweden in one meme. Um, overly simplified, but actually pretty accurate. I had no idea before we moved here that Denmark and Sweden have actually been to war more than any two countries in the world. Did not realize that from these two very peaceful modern countries that they've got a long history of just fighting each other and swapping territory back and forth. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, overly simplified, but very accurate. Okay, yeah, when uh, engineering mega products meet up with Scandinavian passive aggressiveness, you get this uh, monstrosity. No, just kidding, it's the Orson Bridge. Marvelous piece of engineering wonder. Uh, but yeah, the, the tunnel is actually because in Denmark, uh, when you cross the bridge, you're very close to the Copenhagen airport, so you need to have that portion submerged. Uh, but I do believe that the border does allow some of Danish territory to be on the bridge portion or we wouldn't have the TV show The Bridge. I didn't uh, fact check that. I'm just assuming that the, the TV would not lie to me. So, yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right. I love like seeing kids homework assignments that are very literal or very messed up like this. I would give this kid full credit. That's actually really funny. I'm sure this was from like the international school in Oslo or something, but whoever that teacher is, if you're watching, give this kid credit. I mean, yeah, I feel bad for the Finns. They should probably have their flag actually represented, but the kid ain't wrong. That is a Finnish flag. Back to you, Mike. I love a good flag meme, and it is kind of funny when you realize how many flags in Northern Europe look all the same. I mean, it does kind of make sense. I mean, the original Danish flag did descend from heaven on a hillside in Estonia, so how can you step away from perfection? Or maybe just a commentary on the Scandinavian and Nordic simplicity and minimalism? Either way, you decide. We didn't realize until we moved to Denmark that somehow everybody has an opinion of Denmark. I mean, you go to the US, watch Fox News, this is a communist hellhole. Obviously, the English have some hard memories of Viking marauders, both the Swedes and sometimes Scat think that we're all just lazy drunks, but in the end, we're just hoping to get a nice walk through nature when the reality of nature is making it impossible to survive elements where honestly, nobody should be living when you're just trying to walk onto the 15E. Yeah, that's what life is really like. Okay, this is going to take a little bit of a translation for a non-Danish audience here, but Kim's is one of the main snack food brands. They have all the potato chips and things like that. And literally on here, what it says is it's 20% crumbs, 79% air, 1% potatoes. And you know what? It's true. I remember one of the first times that we had friends over, we got a bag of potato chips thinking that we could feed four of us, and it ended up that maybe we got three chips each. So yeah, Kim's, Ugh. not a whole lot in that bag, is there? Mm -mm. This is so true, and I have no idea why. I mean, Denmark isn't a secret place, yet somehow, when we go back to the US, there's a 50-50 chance when we tell people, oh, we live in Denmark, they're gonna say, oh, what do they speak there, Dutch? I don't know why. Can someone explain how people confuse Danish and Dutch? They both sound challenging to the ear, but I don't think Americans can tell the difference between the two. I don't understand this one.
oh America, why can't we be more culturally sensitive and realize that Danes speak Danish, not Dutch. Where's Derek at? <laughs> Classic Drake meme and making fun of Post Nord. This is perfect. And it's actually very accurate. Uh, I think De Denmark is basically fueled by Remelod, Snops, and a deep hatred for Post Nord. Um, and it makes sense. They never deliver anything. I don't know how they're still in business. And literally the only thing that Denmark and Sweden have agreed upon in the last 1,000 years is how sucky Post Nord is. So yeah, this meme, spot on, very accurate. Yeah, Drake. Ah, yes, Smorbrill. And one of the countless unwritten rules in Denmark of how you have to eat Smorbrill, I actually learned this one the hard way. If you haven't seen it, we have a video where we do a reaction to the Danish Christmas lunch and I actually eat Smorbrill. I put herring on a piece of sourdough bread and boom, yeah, everybody went insane. I think we lost like 100 subscribers that day. I'm sorry, but you know what? I ate the herring. I think just work with me here. If I'm gonna eat herring, it's Christmas and you're making me eat herring, just let me eat it on whatever kind of bread I want. But yeah, I guess there are a lot of rules when it comes to Smorbrill and basically anything you eat in Denmark. So make sure you learn those. <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah, this one actually is very accurate. 21 to drink in the US and you can drink whenever you want, even at this child's age in Denmark, uh, as long as your parents give it to you. And that's something that as somebody who got popped with an underage drinking charge when I was only 19 years old in university, I really feel attacked by this meme, I have to say. And it's another YouTube fail of ours actually as well, because we did in our very first video on our channel, a beer tasting for Christmas beers. And we tried this one that the child is drinking in this meme. And I said, yeah, this is very weak. It tastes like some kind of beer you would give to a small child. I was joking. I didn't know that Danes actually give this beer to small children, but it's true, as seen in this meme. I think they also make bread or porridge out of it or something, but yeah, America's a bit behind with 21 years old, but I don't know if uh, the five-year-old should be chugging beer on Christmas, but hey, that's Denmark. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. CPH Farter memes is killing it, and this one is so accurate. When you first move here to Denmark, this is something that all of our Danish friends just take advantage of because everything was already done for them as they were growing up. But when you first move here, you can't get a bank account without a CPR number. You can't get an apartment without a bank account. You can't get a, a phone without a CPR number and a bank account. It's just all of these things. You don't know where to start. And it's basically like a circular firing squad or the circular Spider-Man meme that is shown here. It's pretty crazy. And if you wanna know about all of the other hard things about living in Denmark, we have this video right here on six hard things about living in Denmark. You can watch that next. I definitely recommend it. And thanks for watching guys. Hi, hi.